are some of the more common mistakes that people make on their tax return? Well, here to talk with me about this is Dana Onspot from Sensible Money. Dana, welcome. Thanks, Bob. Great to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. So um, I guess as a prelude, in your firm at Sensible Money, uh, you conduct what are called tax reviews. And we're curious, let's start here. What does that entail and why do you do it? Yeah, so we uh, don't hold ourselves out to be tax experts, but as part of our process, our planning process, we know what's going on with the client throughout the year and what may be changing for the upcoming year, particularly because we work with clients transitioning into retirement, their earned income might be changing, they may be transitioning slowly into retirement, so those, their earned income goes down, other sources of cash flow may be showing up, such as pension distributions and IRA distributions and so on. So when your tax preparer or you do your tax return, we often look at last year and project that forward, they're what I think of as historians. The tax preparers rely on the documents that you upload and, and it's easy to miss things. Particularly, most of us subscribe to online statements now and your tax statements may come online and you may forget or you not even see one and not realize that your tax preparer needs that or that you need it if you're doing your own tax return. And so as part of our process, we do tax reviews where our goal is really to say, well, here's all of the things we were aware of that were happening with this client during the year. And are those in fact reflected on the tax return? So we're looking for what I would call things that can easily get overlooked or missed really, you know, I, I don't even necessarily want to call them errors. In some cases, they are errors, but it's not necessarily that someone made an error, they they maybe didn't get the information, or they just forgot that that was supposed to be on their tax return. So um, let's start with, I guess, the folks who are still working before we move on to other folks. Yeah, so um, I think what I'll talk about are some of the mistakes that we've spotted. So when we do our tax reviews, of course, our goal is to, if we can, find extra money that our client should get back. And in some cases, it's to make sure they don't get a notice from the IRS that surprises them. So if something you know blatant was missed, they, they may end up owing money, but it's better for them to find out than to, to get a surprise letter. But in a case this year, one of the things we spotted for someone still working was a missing qualified business income deduction. Now, for people who are self-employed, the qualified business income deduction can provide a pretty significant deduction. There's all kinds of rules and exceptions and income limits. And there's a certain type of business called a specified service business. And this particular business was exempt from a, a certain rule. And so they were supposed to get a pretty large deduction. And that deduction had been applied on their tax return every year. And for some reason, on their 21, 2021 tax return, it wasn't there. And so we just said, you know, you might want to check with your CPA. Maybe there's some reason they didn't apply it this year that we're not aware of, but it looks like you should have gotten that. And that resulted in a $24,000 refund to the client. And uh, the CPA, you know, was thankful that, that we noticed and, and caught it. In another case, I have a client who is still working. She is self-employed. She had made an investment into a hard money lending program that pays interest on a regular basis. And at the end of the year, that program issued a 1099. Well, they issued a, a 1099 NEC, which is a, a non-employment compensation 1099. So she uploaded it to her tax preparer and they included it as part of her self-employment income, which means she pays FICA taxes on it, Social Security and Medicare and, and self-employment tax. Well, it should have been a 1099 INT, a 1099 that reflects interest income. You don't pay self-employment taxes on interest income. And so again, we just suggested that maybe they look at that and she had to go back to the company and have them reissue the 1099. They said, oh my God, yes, we issued this in air, the wrong type of 1099. And so again, that resulted in a, in a refund for her. So when we see these refund scenarios, it is uh, a lot of fun and our clients are very thankful and grateful that we're looking out for them. Yeah, I can imagine. So uh, one of my favorite topics is uh, all the mistakes and errors that can occur with uh, retirement accounts. You've got a laundry list there. Yeah, we do have a laundry list there. Um, one of the biggest ones we saw was it was the first year a client had retired and taken IRA withdrawals. And that 
issues a 1099-R. So when you take a pension or a withdrawal from an IRA, you get a different type of 1099. And they just forgot to report it. And so we knew there was supposed to be, you know, I think it was somewhere between 50 and $100,000 of taxable income from IRAs on their tax return. Well, that difference jumps right out at you when we're reviewing the tax return. Here's what we expect to see. And wow, there's $100,000 less of income. That's that's strange. And so uh, that was a case where they did end up owing more, but it was a good thing. That would have been a pretty, you know, not not nice notice to get from from the IRS. Um, other things we've seen on a smaller scale, some of our clients do qualified charitable distributions. And oftentimes the 1099 that's issued will just say, let's say you took a gross $20,000 out of your IRA, but 2000 of it was directed to charity. Well, then the, the net taxable distribution reported should only be 18000 But if you don't think of spelling that out for your tax preparer or you're doing your own and you forget, the gross $20,000 gets reported. And so people are missing that deduction. Um, one of the things we see regularly are people who made non-deductible IRA contributions along the way while they were working. And now they go and they take IRA distributions. Well, a portion of each distribution should be a return of basis and not taxable. But they will forget to file. There's a form 8606 that you should file that keeps track of your basis in those non-deductible IRAs. And they won't have that form or forgot to track it along the way. Well, essentially, they're getting double taxed on, on that piece. And, and so we will come across that fairly often. And one of our specialists, our tax specialists this year, also brought up the issue. We're seeing more and more people who have inherited IRAs. Well, you may have inherited an IRA and that person you inherited it from may have made non-deductible contributions. So a portion of each of your withdrawals from that inherited IRA may be a return of basis. And we're not seeing that people are, are tracking that. In that case, you know, let's say I'm working and I have non-deductible IRA contributions and I, and I retire and I'm taking withdrawals from my own IRA and I also inherited an IRA from a parent who had non-deductible contributions, I would actually have two Form 8606s that I would I would need to be filing each year. And so, yeah, it, people just don't know or they forget or they forget to tell their CPA or, or they don't look out for it. Um, there's a few others. If you, I'll just keep going. Yeah, please. Yeah. That, he's <laughs> <Okay>. Great. <laughs> we, uh, we found one, it was a, a Roth conversion and the Roth conversion was simply not reported on the tax return. We had also, uh, the person had made an estimated tax payment to cover the taxes on that Roth conversion. So neither the tax payment nor the Roth conversion, uh, was showing up on the tax return. And then one of the strangest ones we encountered was someone who had pensions. Uh, they had three different pensions each year. And then one year, just one of the pensions was missing from the tax return. And so they had, had probably forgotten to upload that particular 1099 that year. And keep in mind, if you're working with a tax preparer, imagine trying to do a year's worth of work in three months. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know you why know, they choose that profession. <laughs> yeah, It's a lot. They are slammed. And so I always tell people, you know, I prefer to file an extension. I want my tax preparer looking at my things when they're well rested and, you know, not, not so overwhelmed. But, you know, if they have the time, they will often go back and have a checklist and look at last year compared to this year. But sometimes they are so overwhelmed. They are just, you know, kind of getting these tax returns done as quickly as possible, especially if the, their clients are putting pressure on them to get them done by, by April 15th. So it, it can be easy to, to miss some of these things. Yeah. So most people are using the standard deduction these days, but there are some folks who are still itemizing deductions and there are mistakes there to be caught. Well, there are. And so one of the itemized deductions that we still have is we can deduct interest 
on up to $750,000 of mortgage debt on our, our primary residence. And so we had a client who didn't own a home and then bought a home in Florida this year and had bought the home, actually not this year, it was in 2021, had bought the home earlier in the year, in, in about January. And so they should have had a year's worth of mortgage interest. And again, they just, they got the mortgage interest statement from their lender, but they forgot to upload it and a lot of us are guilty of, you know, our, our tax preparer may send us this great questionnaire each year, but we don't want to fill it out or we fill it out too quickly and, and not carefully enough. And so, you know, our tax preparer would have no way of knowing that we had mortgage interest, but we did know. And so we said, you know, it looks like you should have had this deduction. And so again, there was another case where they were able to amend the return and, and get a refund. Those are always nice when, when we find those. Yeah. So we're in a curious year where people are buying and selling investments, sometimes at a loss, sometimes at a gain. And there are some mistakes that you've caught there as well. We have. So, you know, when you sell an investment at a loss, that capital loss will carry forward and you can use it against capital gains in future years. And so we have seen cases um, where people missed that capital loss carryover. It most often happens when people are preparing their own return or when they switch either the software they're using or the tax preparer. So if you're using the same tax preparer every year, most of the time the software will carry forward to the new year, these things that are supposed to carry forward. But if you change providers um, or you change the software package, if you're doing your own, it's it could be missed. And so that capital loss deduction wasn't carried forward. And again, that was a case that that resulted in a in a nice refund for this person. Yeah. So we've covered a, a quite a few mistakes. Any others? Um, the other one that we encountered, one of our planners encountered this year was uh, if you have a refund that's due to you, let's say in 2020, you can check a box and choose to apply that refund to the 20 through the next year's taxes. Mm -hmm. And so this person had uh, uh, chosen to apply their refund to the 2021 tax return. But when we got to 2021, it, it wasn't carried forward. So it was another case where the fact that they had already made that payment and applied it to 2021 was missed. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the tax preparer was telling them to pay in more than they actually needed to because they, they had really already paid that in. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if there's any one takeaway that viewers could get from our discussion today is that mistakes matter. <laughs> they, they could um, cost you money or save you lots of money. Uh, any advice around what people ought to be doing, perhaps, with regard to avoiding future mistakes? You know, I I think not being in a rush, <laughs> um, having a checklist. So for us, it's easy to review the tax return because, again, we have a forward-looking checklist. As people are transitioning into retirement, there's a lot of moving parts. So we know this, 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 and this should be showing up on their tax return. So if you have a checklist and you can, can eyeball it on your tax return or with your tax preparer and say, are these items, in fact, showing up? Um, and another thing I think you can do is be more willing to file an extension. Mm -hmm. So that can give your tax preparer and you time to make sure you have all the appropriate documents. You can also take the time to slow down and fill out that uh, questionnaire that most tax preparers provide you. I know most of the answers are no, 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 but if you slow down and read each question, there will be those times where you go, oh yeah, I did do that this year. And, and so that will lead your tax preparer to know that, that something should be on your tax return. Yeah, I know certainly right at the beginning of the year when all your forms are coming in, your 1099 interest forms or your 1099 divs or whatever it might be, uh, having an organized system could go a long way to also toward right making sure that some of these mistakes are not overlooked or, or <laughs> caught before they're made. Yeah, and we've worked with some, you know, great preparers when when people are moving accounts from one uh, custodian to another who might reach out and say hey we didn't see a 1099 from you know xyz institution this year do you still have that account mm -hmm. and so we know they are using that kind of system um, that you're talking about but even if it's just a short list that you keep in a word document on a yellow pad uh you know in excel however you're 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 you like to organize it, that can help you just say okay did i get this 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 to my tax preparer yeah 
Well, Dana, I want to thank you, for, as always, for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. I'm, I'm sure our viewers will uh, greatly benefit from uh, listening to this one. And hopefully not overpay their taxes. <laughs>